Welcome. Before I get started, a quick disclaimer. When it comes to editing, there is of course no right or wrong way. My way of working might not be for you, but it has certainly served me well over several years. The first step is always the same. And over the years, it's not only kept the process simple, but I like to think has given me a consistency in style. Hopefully my thoughts are of some benefit to you. So let's take a closer look. Although I'm concentrating on the editing process in this video, I have to be very clear that the edit is always determined by my process in the field. How I choose to render the final image is absolutely a continuation of my intent when I made the image. If you lack visual intent in the field, then the editing process might feel less focused, more experimental and perhaps too time consuming. Now, you might prefer to keep capturing and editing as two entirely independent creative processes. But personally, I find that a clear vision from start to finish results in more cohesiveness and very few disappointments. And the beauty of this approach is that your style will kind of slowly and organically evolve in alignment with the maturity of your vision. So here's the final image that we're going to edit. It's titled Winter Sketch, and I made it during Storm Eunice in Scotland. Before I even think about touching a slider in the editing suite, let's look back to what I was thinking when I was stood there behind a very shaky umbrella in the blizzard conditions. Firstly, the experience of nature. It was undoubtedly dramatic as strong gusts of wind lifted swirling snow from the ground. I had to work hard to keep the tripod steady and the lens clean. But despite the drama of the experience, the spindrifts created a very soft aesthetic which obscured the distant trees and made the mid-ground trees appear to almost hover above the heather. And it was crucial to notice this visual effect in the field and work hard to capture that in camera. But perhaps more important than this is what the composition tells us. It's not as simple as some nicely spaced downy birch, but it's the gesture and interaction between these trees. For me, it's the sense of togetherness to brave the elements that's the most dominating appeal of the scene. And I think it's that combination of perfect timing to get the softening effect of the spin drift and the implied emotion of the composition, which would lead me to aim for a sense of calm in the edit. So let's do just that. Okay, so here's the unedited raw file. The crop is exactly as captured in camera. So if I go to the crop tool, you can see that nothing else has been cropped out. It was the 16.9 as chosen in the field. So that's a really good start. Now, first impressions, despite the fact that I overexposed this image by one stop, it's still a little bit on the dark side. It's perfectly acceptable as it is. It's got a nice mood about it, but going back to my original intentions and the, the end result that I want, I want that touch of calmness and positivity. Um, but before we get to the exposure, it looks a little bit cool. So it was quite cool on the day, but I think for the feeling I would want to get across, I'm going to warm it up a little bit. It also seems to be a little bit too much magenta, so I'm just going to drop it towards a green by minus five. Now the exposure, let's go keep knocking up by intervals of 10 plus 40. That's looking pretty good. I'm not looking for pure white. It wasn't pure white in person, and I want to be quite respectful to reality. Highlights, don't need to touch that. I think the balance throughout the scene is already pretty good. Um, but I'm going to boost the shadows just a little bit. I know it's made that a little bit flatter, but we've got these wonderful, intricate, delicate branches. And I, so I don't want those to feel too heavy. I want a little bit of lightness to them. Whites, yeah, let's, let's boost that up a little bit. That's going to introduce um, a little bit of contrast as well. But yeah, I want to get that kind of positive, high key feel to it. Let's go jump down to HSL, Hue Saturation Luminance. Now there is quite a lot of purple in this, I think. Probably not initially particularly obvious, but if I drop that down to minus 100, you can see it's definitely there. So I just want to take a little bit of that out. I mean, you do naturally get that kind of purpley, kind of cherry red in the birch branches, but I want to maintain a little bit of that kind of monochromatic feel in the landscape, which was naturally there. I want to brighten up the area around the branches a little bit as well. So targeting the purple again, I'm just going to, even just plus 20, I think, just lifts it ever so slightly. 
I think overall another boost in brightness, particularly because we're thinking about print and we need plenty of brightness in there, I think. Um, I'm going to go into the tone curve and then a little bit more broadly across the image if I boost the lights just by plus 10, that's really kind of lifted it again, I think. Now most of these I can ignore to be honest, but let's go down to effects because if I just drop, take this back and view it at 25%, it's probably a little bit more obvious that the edges seem a little bit darker. And particularly because I'm thinking about print again, it might be mounted. I don't want those dark edges to appear too obvious. Um, I don't think we need dark edges to help draw the eye towards the center. The arrangement of trees and the overall composition, composition is helping to do that anyway. So I'm just going to lift the edges a little bit in the post crop vignetting. Now, is that, did I just see a little lens spot up there? Or is it just my, have I just got a dirty monitor? <laughs> Let's go into the spot removal tool and we'll go down to visualize spots. And uh, no, that's absolutely clear. It must just uh, be a spot on my monitor. But I did notice this, we've got this sensor spot here, not something that I'm going to want to try and re um, solve in the field in such harsh conditions. But I am going to just hit the spot removal tool I'm going to click on that, make sure it's set to heal. And I'm just gonna find a spot where it just kind of seems to sort of blend in really quite nicely. And then, oh, we're almost there then. There we go, I'm happy with that. You know, even if you print that big, you know, I think that looks pretty good, pretty natural. Um, but this, while we're zoomed in here, we can just appreciate that fantastic horizontal snow. Like I said, that softening effect of the spin drift, softening those distant trees and those mid-ground trees like I said, just kind of hovering over the heather. Absolutely fantastic, really quite beautiful. And you can see, despite all the movement, it's definitely sharp as well. Um, so in terms of what I want to do in the editing suite here, that's it, really simple, just some minor changes. But there are a couple of things that I want to do in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to Edit in Photoshop. That should move across there quite quickly, there we go. Now, I'm not really into doing lots of cloning but there are just some little bits of heather that I want to take out. I'm not looking for a really clean look. I just don't think that's worth the, the time and hassle. So I'm going to take this tool here and let's just zoom in a little bit and just see these little, just these little bits on the edges, that's all. I'm just going to tidy those up a bit, just draw around them. Because of all the snow, they're very easy to remove. I'm just going to draw around like that. And once it's finished, I'm gonna hit delete Make sure the contents is set to content aware. Okay, and there it goes. You know, a bit crude, a bit messy, but it works. And I'm actually going to be a bit cheeky and take this larger clump out here. I'm not going to remove the one next to it because I think it maintains a little bit of balance with all the heather that's exposed on this side. But I might just take this big clump out here. Sorry, but there you go. We do want a little bit of cleanness in this instance. And just that one, just off the edge there. There we go, simple as that. I'm not gonna to feel too, too guilty about it. Now, you might have seen me many times in the past where I've added a little bit of autumn effect. I'm going to do that again, and it's really just to add some, a bit of richness, a bit of soft contrast. So I'm going to press Control J, duplicate that layer, go to Image, Apply Image, Blending mode screen, okay, we've now got a bright version of that image, and then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now this really depends upon the resolution of your camera. Mine's 42 megapixel. I find that radius around about 28 works quite well. I don't want to blur it out too much. When I now set the mode over here from normal to multiply, it's got the effect set at 100%. Now I'm not looking at the image while I'm doing this because I don't want my eyes to adjust. So wait until I reduce the opacity to zero and then I reintroduce the effect. And I think I'm only going to go plus 10. It seems so minor. All these very, what seem like very minor adjustments, this is some of all those that really makes the difference. Control S to save that. Um, that's going to just take a little bit of time saving that to my external hard drive. I can hear that whirring away and that will take it back into Lightroom. And I think that, you know what? I think, I think that's about it. So I, I think for print purposes, I might just brighten that just a touch, just a tiny bit. 
That's it, as easy as that. Just some minor changes in just a few minutes because all the hard work was done in the field. This is just the final step to achieving your vision, if you like. All the editing choices that I've made are very much informed and driven by a clear idea and vision of the feeling that we want to get across in the end image. And I just love the fact through composition alone and the balance of the trees that all the attention is drawn towards the centre of the image. And for me, this is now ready to print. As for printing, I don't want to lose too much coolness on a warmer paper, so for that reason I'm going to opt for Photo Speed NST Bright White. It's a good heavyweight paper at 315 GSM, but for me it's the soft texture that works really well for images like this because it just gently mottles the negative space. Uh, there's no need to do any more adjustments on the image, it's plenty bright and sharp enough, so let's just look at the final result. That's it for this episode. If you like the look of the print winter sketch, then please take a look at my website because there is an introductory offer to save more than 20% on that print, as well as another one which I made on the same day. Now that offer ends on Monday the 2nd of May, so there is very little time left to take advantage of that. Uh, while you're there, please take a look at my book, Gathering Time, and also tickets are now available for the different events at this summer's exhibition with Joe Cornish and I. Um, so yeah, please take a look. We'd love to see you there. But for now, thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Mm -hmm.